Delta Force Hawk Ops, the supposed battlefield killer, as everyone's calling it on the internet. Is it actually that good though? In it actually is. It, it's actually a good game. I'm not even kidding. So this game just uh, launched an alpha test about a few days ago, if not almost a week ago. I got invited to play it. Shout out to the devs for giving me an opportunity to play. Um, and yeah, it's actually a really fun game. Um, there's a lot to talk about with this game. And even though it has a ton of similarities to Battlefield, whether it's, you know, gunplay, the user interface, the maps, which... One of the maps, I forgot which one, is actually very similar to Exposure. I think it's Ascension. If I recall, it's Ascension. But Exposure from Battlefield 2042, you put those two maps together, they look so identical to each other. It's crazy. Um, and the operators too, just like in 2042 as well. It's more inspiration from 2042 than previous Battlefield games, I would say, because of how it plays out. But it's really good, and I wanted to give my impressions and and first thoughts just playing the game after about 10 hours so let's get into it first thing i want to talk about is the gunplay i think the gunplay of delta force is freaking fantastic guns are punchy the animations are crisp nice vfx across the board is really good and yeah and and the game even has inspect animations which i wouldn't expect for an alpha but it has inspect animations and that's sick I think the one thing that kind of steers me away from the game at the moment is ping, but I'll talk about that a bit later because the ping sort of ruins the gunplay for me a bit, which sometimes, you know, you know, shots don't register, but mostly because of, you know, ping and hit registration. So it's understandable, but the gunplay is surprisingly solid for an alpha test. I was actually shocked when I was playing my first game to see it be that good. I, I just think it's excellent that I have nothing bad to say about it. It works well for both the battlefield inspired mode and the um and the extraction shooter mode i forgot to mention too i won't be covering the extraction shooter mode and just instead covering the rush game mode or the battlefield game mode they've got because i'm not the biggest fan of extraction shooters so if you're looking for that gameplay you won't find it here but for the battlefield mode i can talk about that so yeah gunplay really good the gunsmith the gunsmith is probably the best thing about this game and I hope that Call of Duty takes notes. That's how good I think it is. Because that's the other title that I can compare it to um, that has a similar system like this. Let's talk about the positives or the things that it does better than Call of Duty's gunsmith system. Firstly, no limits. You can you can put as many attachments as you want on, on these guns and essentially create your own play style and builds. Build variety in games like this is key, especially with like the gunsmith and... Call of Duty likes to limit the gunsmith to where you only have five attachments. So you can only put five attachments. Maybe they've changed it to six, I'm not sure. But the last time I played Call of Duty, it was limited to five attachments. So you can only put five attachments on your guns, which meant that limited build variety and you, act, you had to actually build. You can still build for a play style. It's not like you can't. You just weren't limited to kind of like go all in on one specific stat or 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 try to go in on a specific range. You had to like limit, um, you had to limit yourself to a specific like build, which is why a lot of weapon build videos on Call of Duty are very common for both Warzone and multiplayer because, you know, Warzone caters for more of the long range engagements and multiplayer is more about being up close. So you get different, I guess that's the kind of variety it, that Call of Duty has, but uh, limiting the attachment just meant that you couldn't really build towards anything specific but in delta force you can build off the wazoo you can you can change the barrel you can put on a stock and adjust the stock length and like the thickness of, a, of an attachment you can put different you know magazine sizes you can change the positioning of your foregrips to give you different stats and it has the, that exact same system where there's positives and negatives of attachments but in a way that they add more flexibility and just being able to further customize your weapon. I just think it's so cool that the game does this. And I really wish that Call of Duty did this. I'm surprised they haven't done this the whole time. But I understand it's for the sake of balance. But man, in Delta Force, it feels wonderful. And the balance is maintained there too because of the positives and negatives of every attachment that you put into your guns. So... You never feel it, it it still feels like the same experience that you'd get in call of duty just with that extra customization and 
I thought this was this is a standout. Like I probably spent most of my time just customizing my weapons and just coming up with different builds for my AK, which is currently like my most used gun at the moment. And yeah, it's 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 fantastic. And I hope that they decide to opt and keep this going into um going into the closed beta because this is great. The Rush game mode or the Battlefield game mode, it's it's everything you know and love about Rush. If you play Battlefield, you know it. You have two bombs to attack or defend. You get tickets. You attack an object objective, and that's it. There's not much else to it. It's very similar, and it works well. Didn't have any problems with it. Spawns were fine. Yeah, just a pretty solid Rush experience. I, I, I'd argue that they do it better than, than uh, Battlefield, but I know Battlefield Rush is like... It's, it's, it's a few, a few, I can't even think of the saying right now, but you don't really get to play Rush this, that much unless it's a limited time mode. Since majority of the time you play Battle for 2042, it's usually Conquest. So you don't really get to see it much, but when it's played in there, yeah, 2042's Rush, I, I think Delta Force does the Rush mode better. And it seems like they're going to have more of an emphasis on it. Um, so I hope that on top of that, they do plan to add Conquest. So I think Conquest in Delta Force would be really cool too. Oh, and another thing to talk about, sorry, it just came to my mind, uh, is the uh, tactical, the, the tactical gameplay of itself. So, Delta Force is Battlefield, but it's a lot slower. It's not as fast-paced as 2042, or even like Battlefield 5, if you want to go that far. Because uh, I'd argue Battlefield 5 is fast-paced too, it just depends on like, you know, how you play. Um, but Delta Force, you can't really rush, you can't rush your way to get kills. You got to take your time to attack or defend objectives. It's a matter of adjusting for the slow TTK, which is something that I've seen get somewhat criticized. But honestly, slow TTK with the tacticalness of it and the way it works, it makes complete sense. If you're going to have a tactical game with a slow TTK, you, you may as well go for it. And yeah, I've seen a lot of people trying to run and gun this game. I've even tried it myself. Do It just it doesn't work. You definitely have to play more around your teammates. And, and just keep attacking choke points until you get an opportunity to push up. I also do love that they brought the uh, the the streak system into this game, which I have not seen since Battlefield 5. And seeing it in Delta Force makes me miss it so much. I miss dropping B2 rockets, smoke barrages, and just pushing objectives. Like, that was one of the best things about Battlefield 5, that they didn't end up bringing back for 2042, and it sucked. It, it sucked. The seeing it back in Delta Force made me so happy. The... The streaks are pretty good too. I'd argue the artillery salvo is a bit on the meh side. Like sometimes it works and and other times it just feels ass. But the missile, the smoke barrage, calling in vehicles, the respawn beacon, all, all well done. I like that the respawn beacon is also a streak item and not a recon item because usually recons would, would get respawn beacons. But it being limited to a um a streak instead is is nice it's, it's pretty good so you don't get you don't have like beacons you know it's not like a common item or you have you have to earn it as opposed to just instantly getting it and then putting it down and yeah i appreciated the tactical gameplay i appreciated being able to slow down in a fight think about how to push and and, and either push with the team or commit to making a flank or making like some sort of play and it all, it, you know, it, even if it works or it doesn't work, it's just still really satisfying to have to think about where you go as opposed to Battlefield where you just kind of play like a mindless monkey or headless monkey. I'm not saying that people, not, that every Battlefield player does do that, but most people that do get into Battlefield probably just play it to just full send and, and rush people. It's understandable. It's Battlefield, especially like 2042. People just run around like headless chickens, just rushing people and thinking and, and thinking they can drop 100 kills or go for 100 kills or whatever. But it's really good. The operators themselves are pretty decent too. I, I mostly just played the assault guy. I think his name is Kai Silva, the one that can uh, shoot the, the grenades, the triple grenade launcher. And he's got like smoke grenades and... Yeah, they, they were fine for the most part. The medic, I played the medic like a game or two and it was fun. I haven't tried the engineer or the recon classes, but the recon class, like the chick, she she is literally just Sova from Valorant, but in Delta Force. They pretty much copied and took his entire, took, took his kit and brought it into Delta Force. That's his kit. So I don't know if they're trying to, they're trying to get the Valorant audience to come to Delta Force, but I just found that hilarious. But the characters are pretty solid. Fun characters, easy to pick up. Mobilities are on cooldowns. Very, very, very cookie cutter stuff. Just like in uh, Battlefield 2042. 
Now onto the problems that I have with Delta Force. The first one being the ping. Now, this is obviously just a me thing because I'm in the OCE or Asian region. So due to this test being only for North Americans and Europeans, I, I've been forced to play on North American servers. And sometimes I get servers with 220 ping. Sometimes I get servers with 240 and others I get 180. Like I used Exalag as well to try and lower my ping. And I mean, it's not too bad given how people are playing the game, but trying to like actually rush people or make some sort of power play I'm always going to die straight away because of the ping. So that is one thing that I unfortunately had a problem with. And I felt like if I didn't have that ping, my experience of the game would have been a lot better. Um, but it didn't necessarily take away from the experience. It was still playable for the most part. And just playing slow and, you know, playing behind cover and just picking people off from afar, it didn't feel that bad. So it was okay. It's just something to mention though. But I have no doubt the next alpha test or the, the next beta or whatever test they decide to do, will probably involve or include the Asia region. So no worries about that. But if you do get into the alpha test as an OC or Asian player, just be aware of ping. Second problem is the is the uh, currencies or the token system that they're doing. So in the game, there's challenges, there's different challenges and like contracts or events that you can do. And as you complete them, you gain these tokens and these tokens can be put into your weapons to upgrade them and boost their levels without having to actually grind the experience in game. And even though this is very early, early stages, I do have a concern that they may end up adopting this style of currency into the main game. And if so, it could make Delta Force pay to win. Now, I don't think I had a problem leveling up guns in game personally. I think the XP gains or levels for um, every weapon level are the same. So you shouldn't really have too much of a problem leveling up your guns. Like I had one game where I leveled the gun up from level one to 11, which is a relative amount of levels for a good amount of kills and and just playing the game so it wasn't didn't seem like that much of a problem but this is something i am scared of because it would make the game pay to win for the simple fact that people can buy these tokens to simply just max their guns without having to put any time into grind so my suggestion to this would be to make the xp tokens timed tokens like like weapon xp tokens in x Defiant, for example where you turn it on, it lasts for like 30 minutes or an hour, and you get that much time to level up your gun. That way, it allows for, I guess, players to grind their weapons instead of just putting a booster on it to get a lot of experience and and have no little effort put into it to level their guns up. I just think this system is, is really bad and it could ruin the game. Last thing to talk about with Delta Force is not being able to change your loadout. So as soon as you pick your operator in the squad selection screen, which all have like different loadouts and stuff, and you load into the game, you can't change anything. So you can't change your operator to counter a tank. You can't change your weapons to cater for different distances. So you can't like change to a, a sniper rifle or change to a shotgun, if you will. And that's all gone. Like in, in Battlefield, you can always change your loadout in game, but you can't do it in Delta Force. I, I'm not sure if this was intentional a lot or not, but please to the devs, please add operator customization or loadout customization in game. So that way we can change. Because like I mentioned, if they have like LAVs in the play and there's barely any engineers, it's GG's. That vehicle's going to stay out for ages and you can't freaking do anything about it. Like, you know, I'd love to be able to change the engineer just so I can get a rocket launcher and shoot the, you know, and be anti-tank to destroy the tank. But you can't do that because as soon as you're in game, it's you're, you're set in stone for whatever operator you're playing. So that's, yeah, that needs to be changed. Overall though, Delta Force Hawk Ops is pretty solid again i just think it has potential to 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 maybe not take out battlefield but at least have some competition like i saw people in steam discussions or just like i'm going through the community hub of like the battlefield killer or oh, your work be work work this work that i'm just like oh man why why can't people just let games coexist alongside their competitors i just don't understand people said the same thing with marvel rivals I actually think Marvel Rivals can compete with Overwatch given the state of Overwatch right now. It doesn't matter whether or not 6v6 is coming back, which should have been in the game like fucking two years ago. But still, games can coexist alongside each other. So why can't Delta Force be the same? And yeah, that's it for my thoughts. To get into the game, you, you, you simply just request access for it on Steam, but it's very limited at the moment. So you'll either get selected or you won't. There's also a way to get it through Twitch drops as well, but I have no idea how that works other than just like these 
limited key drops that they're doing, similar to what they did with Marvel Rivals, which is just so stupid. And and it's like a it's like a it's like a luck simulator of hoping that you get a key. It's 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 kind of annoying. But those are the only two ways that I know to get into the alpha. But if you do get into it, go into it with an open mind and don't think of it as too much of a battlefield killer. Think of it as more of a competitor and you'll get a better experience out of it. It's really fun and I can't wait to play more of it. So yeah, that's it for the video. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.